Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, um, I'm going to give you uh, a solution to a little challenge that I posed in the last tutorial, which was on um, using size of, uh, particularly with arrays. And I suggested there that for a, a, um, some practice, you could use size of to iterate through an array instead of hard coding the number of values in the array in your for loop. And I suggested that you could try this on a multi-dimensional array if you're feeling particularly ambitious. And because that's quite tricky, um, I'm going to actually give you the solution to that here. So um, have a go at it um, if you feel up to the job. It's worth trying. And uh, the way we're going to do this actually is first let's investigate a little bit. What we, here we've got a multi-dimensional array. Um, it's actually two rows here of um, strings in this case, although the stuff that I'm about to show you applies equally well to, uh, to other types. Let's investigate a bit what we can get using size of here. So let's say see out size of string for a start, endler, and let's run this. So I've got um, an unused variable warning here. So the size of a string is eight bytes. It doesn't matter how many characters you put in the string. The thing that we're actually storing in the array is um, it's what we call a string object. And that object uses memory that's allocated elsewhere. So, so the actual, these actual strings are not stored directly in the array. We're storing these string objects in the array and um, the memory for each particular object were, that contains the actual characters that actually exists somewhere else other than in the array. So don't worry about that. But basically, this is the same as, as if we had ints in the array. We've got objects of a fixed size in the array, and each one has eight bytes. We can also do size of animals, um, well, size of animals, and that will tell us, tell us the total size of the array. So in, in the array as a whole, we've got 48 bytes. So each entry is eight bytes, and we've got six of them. Eight times six is 48 bytes. And we can get the size of the, um, of the first row here, which is going to be the same size as the second row, because all the, all, the, all the rows have to have the same number of values in, in C++. So we can do, do that by doing animals zero. That's the size of the first row. And if we look at that, we expect um, 24 because we've got eight bytes and we've got three entries, so that's 24 altogether bytes. So to loop through the array, let's go through the outer array first. Let's say for int i equals naught, i less than, this is a tricky bit, and I'll leave that out for the moment, i plus plus, and let's put the brackets in. Um, so we want the size of the total array just divided by the size of um, the sub subarrays. So that's going to be size of um, animals. That's the size of the total array divided by size of animals naught, which will give us the size of each of these subarrays. They all have the same size. And if we divide the total size of the array by the size of any one of its subarrays, then we're going to get the number of subarrays. In other words, the number of rows in the array, which is exactly what we want. Let's go through the inner loop here for int j equals naught, j less than, um, well, this is a tricky bit again, j plus plus. So now we want the size of um, any of the subarrays, which is size of animals naught. So that's the size of the first subarray, also the same size as the second and however many we have. Divide by size of the items that we have in it, which is string. So that should work. We divide the size of a subarray by the size of the items in it. We get the number of elements in the array. Let's try that. See out animals and um, we need two square brackets here. And we've got i and j in there for our indices. And let's output this. Let's have some space there, followed by a flush so that we have um, some space after each entry and then before the outer loop I'm going to put a new line character just so that we have each of the rows on their own line and let's run this. So 
so now we get, if we've got it right, um, <laughs> that's not what I intended. Let's just change this to flush. So I want to have all the entries within one row on the same on the same line. That's why I put this space there to separate the entries on one line. Now we've got fox, dog, cat, mouse, squirrel, parrot, which is what we have in our um, in our uh, 2D array, our table, in other words. Let's just put unsigned int in here because, as we saw in the last tutorial, we um, we're going to get this warning otherwise with this compiler about. Uh, comparing the signed and unsigned value. So there we go. And that should work. That's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I think we're going to look at the switch statement, which is uh, another kind of conditional statement, a bit similar to if, um, else if, but um, more kind of useful for some situations. So until next time, happy coding.